Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you. Uh, It's always good to be with you. I'm going to uh, read to you one of my favorite stories uh, from the New Testament, the encounter between the risen Christ uh, and Mary, Mary Magdalene. And I'm going to read from John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18. Now Mary uh, stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. And at this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you were looking for. And thinking that he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned towards him and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, to your Father, to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord. We thank God so much for that remarkable encounter. We pray that God will speak to each one of us today uh, through it. I don't know if you've heard that rather corny story of the guy who was climbing up this very uh, steep mountain And just as he reached the top, a strong gale force wind blew up, uh, blowing him off the edge. And as he fell down the side of the mountain, there was a little branch that was sticking out of the rocks and he grabbed it and held on to it. And there he was kind of suspended between earth and sky. So he looked up and he said, God, help me. And he heard a voice coming back to him very gently. Uh, do, you, do you trust me? He said, of course I trust you. Help me. The voice said very gently, do you really trust me? He said, yes, that's why I'm speaking to you. Please help me. And then the voice came back very loudly and said, okay, let go. I hear there's another ending to that story where the guy says, is there anyone else up there that I can please talk to? It's rather a corny story. It leads us into a difficult theme today, letting go, letting go. I think my whole message can be summarized quite simply. If we want to really learn to love others as God loves us, 
If we really want to move closer to others in healthy, life-giving, mature ways, if we really want to experience the Holy Spirit working in our friendships and relationships and congregation and communities, we need in our relationships to learn how to let go. We need to learn, can I put it a little differently? We need to learn how to love others with open hands. I think this is what Jesus was helping Mary to learn. It's a, it's a very moving story. She had been through a horrendous time since Jesus had been killed. Those two days must have been dark and desolate. Jesus had been the one who had loved her back to life again. And on that Friday, he was crucified and her life was plunged, I'm sure, into darkness and despair. And so early on that Sunday, she goes to the tomb because she wants to perform her last act of love. She wants to anoint his dead body. But when she reaches the tomb, it's empty. And then there is this remarkable encounter that the one whose dead body she had come to anoint has been raised from the dead and he meets her as the risen Christ and as the risen Lord. He calls her by name, Mary. She turns, we're told, she turns towards him. Instinctively, she wants to, to cling to him and, and hold him and never let him go again. And then, he speaks these words to her. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. Some translations say, do not cling to me, for I've not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. When you first hear those words, they sound a little bit cruel, callous, cold. But Jesus here is wanting Mary to discover a deeper kind of relating. He wants her to learn how to let go in love. He wants her to to discover how to really love with open hands. It's a challenge that I've been living with for over 40 years. <laughs> Learning to love with open hands. And over the last few days, I've been thinking about it again. And some just some thoughts have distilled themselves in my own heart and mind. I'd love to share them with you today. But I pray that somehow as I share them with you, that you will have a sense of God speaking to you very, very personally. The first thought that I want to share with you is a very simple one. I want to remind you and I want to remind myself today that God loves us with open hands. Has that ever struck you? I often say to you that if we really want to know what God is really like, we always look in the direction of Jesus. Jesus reveals God to us. Do you remember that moment in John chapter 14 when Philip goes to Jesus and says to Jesus, Jesus, will you show us the Father? We want to know what the Father's like. And Jesus says to Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And so when we watch Jesus relate to people, that is how God relates to us. 
And have you noticed that when you follow Jesus through the gospel, he never forces people into anything. He never pressurizes people. He never coerces people. He always loves people freely, freely. And that is how God loves us. I don't know about you, but I've never experienced God as pushy in my life at all. I've never experienced God as, as trying to twist my arm. I've never experienced God as manipulating me or forcing me to do anything. God's personal love for each one of us is given freely, freely to each one of us. And today, today, God comes to us again in Christ and says, I love you with, I love you with open hands. I think of the open hands on the cross of the crucified Christ. Open hands, open hands. All we do is we open our lives up to receive this gift and we let go of our lives and we surrender them to God. We fall in love with the God who's already in love with us. And when that happens, everything, everything changes, everything. I love the words of Pedro Arupi. And I just want to again, if I may, just share them with you very simply. Nothing is more practical, he writes, nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you're in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, it decides everything. Wouldn't it be very special if today we fell in love again with the God who loves us with open hands. But let me say something else. There is a challenge in the gospel, and the challenge is for us to begin to love each other in the same way that God loves us. To begin in our relationships to love others with, with, op with open hands in our own relationships to let go of others so that they can be their own people. I think this is what Jesus was, was doing with Mary when he, look, look again, just the, that first phrase when he speaks to her. She wants to hold on to him and he says to her, do, do not hold on to me. Don't cling to me. Jesus, Jesus knows that so often when we cling, it suffocates a relationship. Someone was saying to me the other day, Trevor, in my marriage, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And sometimes when we cling to people, we stop them from becoming who God wants them to be. And sometimes when we cling to people or to things, they so easily become our gods. And here Jesus is wanting Mary to let go, to let go to be open to something new and deeper and richer and fuller. I don't know about you, I find this difficult. I find it difficult. It's Father's Day today, I'm a father. I haven't found it easy sometimes to love my kids with open hands. Sometimes I want them to do what I want them to do. 
I want them to become the kind of people that I want them to become. Very easy for me to hold on to them. Never forget if, when my daughter uh, matriculated that night after writing her final exam, she left for London for six weeks. She knew no one there. She was going, wait for it, she was going to listen to her favorite punk rock bands in the underground clubs of Camden Town, my daughter. The one that I had held, the one who had sat on my knee, the one whose side of the head I had kissed was going to listen to punk rock music in underground clubs in Camden Town in London. I'll never forget when she walked through that exit door at uh, Oliver Tambo Airport. I never slept, let me be honest, I never slept for I think the first three nights after she left. I'd be thinking, what is she up to? And in the struggle of my own feelings, I wrote a little poem. And I wrote it for her and I wrote it for my son. I gave it to my son one or two years later. And I want to share that poem with you. I believe that you were created to live freely. And I place your life into the loving hands of your creator. And I let go of my clinging hold on your life. And I'm willing now for you to make your own choices. I no longer, I no longer want to play God in your life. I want you to live your life according to your best understanding and light. I respect the image of God in you. I want to learn to love you with open hands. I love you and I bless you. I have confidence in you and I always will. It was my moment of letting go. I don't know who you need to just love with open hands. Maybe it's someone in your family battling with addiction. Someone who's making choices that are different values to yours. Someone who maybe doesn't respond to you the way you would like them to respond to you. What does it mean to love with open hands? And to let the other person have the space that they need to become the person that they want to be. Can I say one more thing? I think when we learn to love with open hands, when we learn to let go of people in love, we create the space in our relationships for the Holy Spirit to do a deep work, a very deep work. And I think Jesus here was wanting Mary to really get hold of this. Did you notice how he ended that little sentence to her? He said, I'm ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. I'm ascending. And when I ascend, no longer will I be in one place. My presence now will fill the universe. It will be all over. My spirit will be in every friendship, every relationship that you are in. My spirit will be with you. I've been a pastor for a long time, 
And I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned as a pastor over the years is that I can change no one, no one. I think it must have been about 20 years ago when I had a sense of God saying to me, Trevor, you make a very bad Holy Spirit. Don't try be the Holy Spirit. Don't try change people. Learn to love them. Learn to love them, care for them. Do your very best for them, but love them with open hands. Let me be God in their life. Do not play God in their life. Do not think that you know what is best for someone else. It's been a long journey. But there's a great freedom when you love like that. It's a great freedom to give up playing God in someone else's life. I have a practice almost every morning whenever I pray, I will cup my hands, I'll cup my hands like this, and I, I kind of imagine giving to God each of my loved ones. I imagine Debbie, she's the woman I'm married to, in my cupped hands, and I offer her to God. And I want God's will to be done in her life. I remember how I used to pray. I used to pray wanting God to do my will in their lives. <laughs> God will, I know what you need to do. Do it. <laughs> I've changed. I don't know what's best. And so I place her in God's hands and I place the kids every day almost in God's hands. My friends, congregation, sometimes you. Asking God, God, all I want to know is how I can love them best, but I want you to be God in their life. Let me, let me end. The challenge today to let go, to let God. It's to learn to love with open hands. It's a lifelong journey. I don't know what branch maybe you're holding on to that you need to let go. Maybe it's a branch of possessiveness or control, manipulation. Maybe it's a branch of an unsurrendered life. Maybe you're holding on to your own life. Let go. Let God. Let God begin to act in your life and let God begin to act in the lives of those that you love. Let's pray together. Dear God, we, when we come together, speak often about things that touch our, our souls very deeply. We thank you that you love us with open hands. We thank you, dear God, that you, you, you give us a spacious intimacy in our relationship with you. We want to fall in love again with, with you. Your deep love changes everything in our lives and we want to pass on to others the love that you have for us. We would love, Lord, to learn how to love more deeply, more freely with open hands. Will you take us on this journey, Lord, that we may discover the real freedom of loving with open hands. This is our prayer. We offer it to you with all the love, all the longing of our hearts. In the name of Christ our Lord, and we say together as God's people, amen. And may the joy of Christ be with you. Bless you, friends.